Hi, Dave Whitman, Truth and IT. I'm joined today by Christoph Bertrand. Christoph is VP of Product Marketing with ArcServe. Christoph, welcome. Hello, Dave. How are you doing? I'm doing well, but uh, you know, I am confused. I am among the masses of people who are confused about Office 365. We think because we have it that we are protected in all ways, shapes, and form because Microsoft is so big and so awesome and so cool and they got this great cloud and it's a great product but help sort of dispel some of these myths. Well, so yeah, you have your, your email in 365. That's great, great service, no question. Uh, first things first, uh, have you archived your old email that you had on premise before? Because more than likely you were on exchange before, you moved to 365, you may have years of emails. What have you done with those? So there's an archiving component to that. Now the big question is when you had uh, your email on, on on premises, you would do backups. You'd go to uh, to disk or to tape or whatever it is you did, but you'd have a backup. And the reason why you have a backup of your email is not so much for compliance because you need an archive for that, but it's really for recovering from a problem, from a disaster. Uh, and remember with email, the one thing that happens quite a bit is problems sort of replicate themselves. So if something goes wrong, then it gets replicated and then, uh, then you have to go back and recover to, uh, to a point uh, where things were good. Or maybe it's a virus that starts infecting a bunch of uh, different mailboxes. Whatever the case may be, you're looking at a point in time restore. That's what you need. You need to be able to go back in time to a good time. So this is great, but don't think you're getting that backup uh, with 365 unless you back up you don't have one. At some point, the data will go away because of the terms and of services. And should anything happen to your emails, the problems will be replicated uh, to that 365 environment as well. So, Christoph, you know, we've got uh, Office 365. It's a great product. It's a great application. And we've spoken about backup and data protection. But what about archiving? We still need to archive that data as well, right? Yes, absolutely. So you need to archive data for multiple reasons, ranging from compliance to legal uh, search or legal exposure, as well as maybe for also for uh, optimization of your of your environment. But as I explained, if you've just moved off of uh, uh, Exchange on premise, what are you going to do with those historical emails? You still have to keep them for a while. Uh, so that's a good reason to have an archive. And then you want to archive everything that comes in and goes out. Here's the thing, though. You want to make sure that the archive is immutable. In other words, an end user cannot make an email disappear. With backup, which you need to do, we talked about that, uh, you could easily delete an email before the, the mailbox, get, uh, mailbox gets backed up. At that point, the email is gone, right? Uh, whereas in an archive, it's not gone. It's going to stay in forever. Uh, of course, uh, if it has an, ex an expiration date or, uh, you know, essentially a, a time at which point you want to dispose of it, well, those rules will apply and then the email will disappear. But that's by definition something you've decided to do on purpose. Uh, so those compliance rules will apply depending on your industry, your business requirements, your best practices, right? Uh, the other thing that's very important is the immutability component, meaning as an end user, I cannot go modify the archive, okay? I can go delete my emails all I want in my inbox, and maybe those emails will be gone from a backup standpoint, but they will not be gone from an archive perspective. And that's very important. Now, if you uh, go for archiving options in 365, well, first of all, you're going to have to pay more. You actually have to upgrade your plan significantly to do that. And uh, you may not get all of the features you need from a compliance standpoint. Uh, the fact that end users can still go uh, modify some of those uh, emails, that's an issue. So you really need to look at a specialized solution that only does one thing, which is great search, um, you know, great archiving from the perspective of compliance, applying the right type of rules, the ability to search very efficiently, uh, and uh, again, uh, the ability to only uh, let end users access archive emails, but not modify them ultimately or remove them from the archive. Okay, great. Well, why don't uh, why don't we bring on uh, Mark Johnson? Uh, Mark is a pre-sales consultant 
with ArcServe, and he can take us on a tour of the uh, UDP backup mm -hmm. for Office 365. And so uh, let's bring on Mark. Mark, are you there? Hey, Dave. How you doing? Okay, so I'm going to log into uh, UDP, Unified Data Protection, our uh, premier suite of backup and recovery solutions, right? Um, and when we go into here, we'll, when I first log in, we'll see a dashboard panel that shows what's going on in my environment. But let's, talk, let's go specifically and talk about backing up 365. So I have a small 365 instance here. I'm just backing up my own stuff. But in the case of um, backing up an entire 365 environment, we'd be backing up through an admin type account. So I'm going to go out to the plan that we would use. And, and you see here that once I create an instance of 365 to back up, it shows up as a node. Um, just like any other node, whether it be a VM or a standalone machine, in my environment here, okay? So I'm going to go out to the plans, and if you look here, here's my 365 plan. Let's go in and modify this plan, and I'll t take a look in, at, and see how that works. So if I go and, look, and modify my instance here, there's just a few things that you need to do um, in 365 as an admin, you need to make sure sure that the backup account that you're using, whether it be an admin account or whether it be a service account you created for UDP, is part of a discovery management group and has application impersonation role associated with it, so it can grab all the email from a given instance, right? So, and and you can pick and choose how much of um, individuals uh, content gets backed up. So you can back up everything. You can exclude certain uh, folders from the backup if you want, if you don't want to back up clutter, if you don't want to back up some other things. But we'll back, otherwise we'll back up the entire mailbox, right? Including messages, the attachments, calendars, contacts, those kinds of things. So once I create the instance, I can save that, right? And now it becomes uh, just another note that I'm going to back up. So in, in my case here, I'm going to back it up from 365 and I'm going to back it up to my recovery point server, just like I would back up any other node, right? And it's going to take a second to validate. There's a schedule here, and I can back it up as often as I want. So keep in mind, I can back it up, um, you know, daily, monthly, weekly, and I can even back it up more than once a day if I do a custom, right? So if I wanted to back it up a couple times a day, I could do that. And I have uh, the option to choose what my retention policy is going to be. So I'm backing it up every weekday here, and if you look here, I'm backing, I'm keeping three concurrent recovery points. So my retention point is basically, or my retention period is basically three days. So, you know, it's a small environment. I don't have a ton of disk space, but most customers are going to want to keep that probably either a week, two weeks, maybe even 30 days for some customers, right? So that's basically how we would back that up. Now, once I have a backup, right, once I have a backup of my 365 environment, let's say I need to restore an individual email or a mailbox or a group of emails, I can simply click on that recovery or that node there and it'll log me in and I can choose which recovery point I want to restore from. So I'm going to go to this full backup and keep in mind that our incrementals look like fulls too. So you can restore anything, uh, any message from uh, an incremental or a full. So I'm going to go to this full here and I'm going to say, I'm going to, I want to do a restore. Okay. And now I'm going to say next. That's my recovery point. It's a full. And now if you look here, I can just simply browse down to the content that I want. In fact, these here are individual messages. And I can simply restore those back. Okay. And I can restore them to uh, the original location, right? Or I can restore them to an alternate location as well. So if I wanted to restore them just to a file, right, like a PST file, or I can restore them to an alternate mailbox as well. So it really does give customers the ability to uh, protect this information, protect this, this messaging information that's up in 365, and have a, a, a flexible way to restore it. So let's say, the mail, let's say the mailbox doesn't exist anymore, right? They can restore that content to an alternate location. So... It gives you a, it, that should give you a pretty good uh, overview of, of what it takes to restore this data and how we can protect it. As Christoph mentioned before, I'm going to log into the solution here as one of the pre-configured um, security roles within the solution. Uh, so keep in mind that 
the solution is managed via a browser, as you can see, I'm just using Chrome today, and it can run on-premise or in the cloud as well. So I'm going to log in as Auditor. So Auditor is a role that basically has the ability to search across all the content in the archive, right, for all users. So let me log in as Auditor, right? And right away, you'll see some search tools, right? So as an auditor, I'm going to basically be doing a, uh, a couple different things, right? I can respond to very, very specific um, requests or, you know, court orders or whatever for uh, uh, message content information, right? Or maybe it's an HR issue and I'm looking for some very specific uh, verbiage in the email. Mm -hmm. So if, if I look here and I hit advanced search, it gives me the ability to enter the information that I'm looking for. So I can search by to and from emails, from topic. And in any of these fields here, I can use keywords, I can use Boolean strings, right? I can exclude or include. And keep in mind that we do a full text index of all the content as it's being ingested into the archive, whether that be the message or the attachment, right? So. I can search by uh, keywords in an attachment. So maybe there's, um, I'm looking, at, maybe I'm an HR person. I'm looking to see it if, uh, you know, intellectual property is being sent outside the company or whatever. And I can search specifically on an on attachment for some verbiage. Um, we also have the ability to create tags and notes to associate with different message content. So, you know, keep in mind as we're ingesting this in and we're associating this metadata, what we're really doing is we're creating a record right, for every, me every message that's in the archive. It really it does become a records management solution at that point. So I can associate tags and notes. So if I want to go back later and search by those notes or those tags that I've associated with the content, I can certainly do that. I can do a time or a date range for these, and I can include or exclude any of these fields in here that I want, right? So I can get very specific. I can look for email between two individuals, between a certain date range, with a certain attachment with a keyword in that attachment. So it gives me the ability to be very granular around how I search for that information, right? And once I do a search, I can come up with a list of hits right down here, right? If I click here, I can actually see the body of the messages that I've found in my search, right? And I can also pick and choose which ones I either want to uh, download, right, or print. So I could print these out if I want to. I can download one or many. Um, if, I don't, if I choose to download many, they'll be downloaded as EML files um, in a zip file format. And I can take and import those into any other email system for view. So if, if I want to pull those into a PST file or whatever, or I need to hand those off to my legal counsel, EML files are kind of a uni universally accepted or universally used uh, message format, right? It's, it's pretty common out there, even more common than PST files are today. And I always have the ability to save my search, right? So I can always go back and search later with the exact same criteria. In fact, if I go over here, maybe I have some saved searches. Yes, I have some searches with some uh, specific content in them. So if I actually clicked on CNN, I could go back and research um, uh, some message content that I had found previously, right? And so keep in mind that from a user perspective as well, I mean, you know, part of the part of the beauty of the system is that users have the ability to access their own content with the same search tools, or they can search uh, using uh, uh, a plug-in applet for Outlook. But this really does give um, companies uh, a very, very powerful tool to be able to respond to either compliance requests, compliance requirements, or legal requests as well, right? And it also gives them the ability to keep a handle on their content, put a very, very specific uh, retention policies and legal holds on the content that is in the archive. So for example, if I choose to um, change uh, retention policies for users with, you know, within my organization, I can certainly do that, it can be very granular. And again, if you're using this for legal or compliance reasons or whatever, you're always going to want to put content that may be in question on legal hold. And once we put it on legal hold, that will override any retention policies out there so that information will not disappear due to retention disposition. And then we have an audit log. So everything that happens um, 
from the audit perspective is captured in this log. If you see here, it's very detailed. It shows who logs in, who logs out, messages that are viewed, um, uh, search descriptions, what was searched, right? And the, it creates a reference number that we can always go back to and refer to. So it's a fully auditable uh, or a fully immutable audit log, I should say, um, that can be used in conjunction with um, turning over the information maybe for a legal issue. One uh, quick question for you, uh, Mark, is if you come up with a, a search result on, and come up with a list of emails, can you flag some of them uh, because for whatever reason they require additional review and make them visible to your colleague, for example? Yeah, so example, that would be where you'd want to put a tag on there, right? So I could actually just create a tag. So if I was on a team of more than one auditor, let's say, let's say I go out and I do a search, I find a uh, a list of uh, or a collection of emails that may want to be uh, reviewed further, I could tag those emails and I could create a tag. And then the people on my team could always go out and search by that tag and we could narrow, it, narrow that search down even more based on the content that's in those tagged messages. Okay. And I can also add notes to those um, to give uh, maybe people on my team a heads up as yeah. to something that I'm seeing in there or what maybe the next steps might be. Okay. All right, fabulous. Well, um, you know, really appreciate you guys coming to show us the solution today. Christoph Bertrand, Mark Johnson with ArcServe, thanks very much for taking the time.